example of play video for the Plum Island Horror by GMT Games. In this video, we're going to be playing round three, which is a night turn, so it'll be a chance to look at some of the unique rules that only occur during night turns. So, it being a night round, the first thing we do is the hunger attrition phase. So, let's just kind of go through here. So, the Pearl Security Services have five faction units on the board. Um, and so they have to spend five supplies. So now they are down to six supplies. Uh, similarly, the Greenport Township has five faction units on the board. They haven't built their compound yet, so they have to pay five supplies. And since none of these have built uh, compounds, they, um, they don't have civilians there. Now the National Guard only has two units on the board so far. So far we kind of manage that. So they spend two supplies. And the Plum Island Constabulary, like most of the others, has five on the board, so they are going to spend five supplies. That puts them down to having only three supplies left. So with that, we are through the hunger attrition phase. With the uh, hunger phase out of the way, we draw our first token and we get the Plum Island Constabulary. So as always, we start with crisis adrenaline moves. I'm going to pause for a second while I think about this and I'll come back and execute what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to mostly leave folks where they are, but I am going to get um, Francis Drebin and Chief Lee Hartman over here. Um, so they're reasonably protected in, a, in an urban space, but they can use um, ranged combat against this Murder of Horrors stack here, which is, is threatening its way down the, uh, down the track. So uh, with that finished, we will move on to um, our, act our actions. And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to uh, do ranged combat here with uh, Francis Drebin uh, against this Murder of Horrors stack. And in this case, we're rolling three dice because um, of the uh, Plum Island Constabulary leader, uh, leader ability, which adds one to uh, blows to combat capabilities. Oh, look at this. That's what we needed. So we got two hits and a uh, critical hit. So we'll roll the critical hit again, and we got nothing on that, but that still results in three hits, which is really is excellent. Whittles down this stack. And of course, I forgot to pay uh, one supplies for that before I did it, but I will remember after I did it. So that takes me down to only two supplies left with the Plum Island Constabulary, which is a little bit concerning. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually then have, uh, for my second action, I'm going to search and see if maybe I can pull a few more supplies for the Plum Island Constabulary. So that's one result and two. So uh, one is I can place the Hero of the Day NPC unit uh, by the game turn track. And when the next player unit eliminates any horrors unit, I'll take the Hero of the Day unit and immediately place it into the same area as the Victorious unit. If the area is then overstacked, place the Hero unit to any eligible adjacent area instead. Exhaust this area after resolving this card. Uh, or reality TV show your unit stumbles upon the ongoing taping of a reality TV show uh, and so what you would do is place the naked and afraid VIP civilians unit in the area along with two supplies so this is a bit of a tough choice because the hero of the day unit is really a pretty good unit um, they have three close combat and if they do a move action and ends in the same area as a horrors unit it can immediately conduct a free close combat attack. So it's actually a pretty good unit that I would like on the board, but obviously um, the Naked and Afraid uh, VIP unit is worth a lot of evacuation points. What I am going to do is take the NPC unit because I there are ways to get supplies, um, but getting these NPC units into the game is not always there's only one card that allows me to do that. So uh, having done that with my second action, I'm going to do a um, another range combat with Francis Drebin 
uh, this time I will remember to pay my supplies beforehand. The goal here will be to uh, get this unit into the game. So, and I place an exhausted location based on the uh, search card. Sorry, I forgot to do this, but I place an exhausted marker on that location. So, again, I am rolling three dice for ranged combat, and I want to eliminate the unit here. Okay, I got a critical hit and a shield. The shield in an urban space results in nothing, but the critical hit gets me one hit, another critical hit, so two hits. I roll again, I get three hits, um, and this unit comes on the board, comes onto the board. So let's see, how many are in this stack at this point? So there's four in that stack. So we're gonna move three of them off. This was a good turn, this is what I need. Now let's see, into the same area as the victorious unit, if the area is then overstacked, place the hero in any adjacent eligible space. So um, I would, uh, so eliminated, I would place him in this area, but this would of course be overstacked. So I'm actually gonna place him in this unit. And so this gets me more units in this center area. And now I've got uh, this unit, uh, which is gonna move very slowly, but it is now blocked from, from moving. So a uh, very successful turn that I'm really, really, really happy about that. So now we go on to follow actions. Um, and we start with the National Guard. And the National Guard up here, again, uh, they're, all of their units are up here. So I think I'm going to, um, this is only one unit, and it's not moving very fast. But I would rather it not sort of show up and just, because if, if I don't eliminate it and it moves, it's going to create a close combat, which is going to add to the biohazard bag. And that just seems um, unnecessary. So I'm going to have uh, Corporal Agarn um, do range combat against it. So he has a four, and hopefully I can just get one hit on this. I get plenty of hits, three hits, so suddenly we're rolling really well for range combat. A little bit of wastage there, but uh, that cleans out that space and uh, is the end of the National Guard's follow action and no event card. So now we have the Greenport Township. And I think what I'm gonna do at the Greenport Township, oh, I can't do that, okay. What I was thinking is, I was, I, what I think I wanna do is build the um, Greenport Township's compound unit here in this space, because that'll provide, again, a nice block in the middle of the board uh, to prevent uh, the, the horrors from moving, but I can't build it with Ralph Norton because he only has an admin rating of two and you need an admin rating of three um, in order to actually build it. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, um, let's see, I think I'm gonna move one of these units. So I think I'm gonna move the mayor two spaces. I'll, use, I'll do it, just do a foot movement action with him. Move him two spaces. So he's now adjacent to uh, Ralph Norton, and, and most of my units are sort of converging on this area. So uh, I should be able to build that compound unit in a subsequent follow action um, over here. Let me just double check what his ability is. Admin and bravery ratings of the faction units by plus one for all purposes. So that's good. So with him there, um, now Ralph Norton has a three admin, so he could actually uh, build the compound unit um, in a subsequent follow action. So I'll draw a fate card, no event for that. And now the Pearl Security Services, which are here and are facing off um, this horrors unit. So I. About the best I can do here is, um, yeah, there's not a lot I can do up here because I don't have close combat ratings with either of these units, so they can't attack that unit. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is, is not dissimilarly, I'm going to move this, I'm going to do a foot movement to get the, um, the their CEO moving up, and that'll allow me um, to, uh, to, to sort of 
again, I'll probably look to build their compound somewhere like right here um, in order to try to block off this area a little bit with a, with a strong unit. So I'll just move her here so that, again, we're getting her leadership ability close to my units. So we draw a fate card and no event. So with that, the Plum Island Constabulary's turn is finished, and we will then move on to draw our next turn order cube, which is actually the Pearl Security Services. So let's look at where we are here. What I'm thinking right now is I'm a little worried that I'm a little bit sort of short on um, the track over here. I've only got these two units, and, and I would eventually like to get this unit more linked up with his um, compatriots over here. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to move Dr. McCoy here. The other thing is I'm, I'm thinking about building my compound, and I don't want to build my... This area's damaged, so I can't really use it for that much. So, uh, and I could spend time repairing it, but I think I'd rather not. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'm going to have both of these units fall back one. Um, and now they are close to uh, Martha Winfrey uh, and adjacent to her, which, which might allow me to build my compound in that area. And Kevin Blark, of course, uh, will stay where he is. So that's the crisis adrenaline move for the, uh, for the Pearl Security Services. So now in terms of actions, let me just double check something real quick. Okay, so the Pearl Security Services leader ability is that uh, you can choose one rating to increase by one um, if she's adjacent to it. And basically you, you pick one rating per action and it can keep changing. So what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, build my compound unit um, up here. Uh, and uh, th what I can do is, you know, both of these guys have an admin rating of two, but I can use her special ability to make their admin rating three for purposes of building this compound unit. So to build the compound unit, I need to spend two supplies. So we'll eliminate two supplies. Um, I need to apply a hit, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up using um, the, the, this character to build a compound because he has a slightly higher toughness rating. Um, and I have to place a hit cube on that unit but then I can grab the compound unit and place it on the board. Okay, so we place a compound W into that space. Now, these civilians units can immediately uh, go into this compound. And the benefit of this is that at the end of the game, they can be evacuated from here. The downside is I now have to feed them. Let me just double check how much these are worth. Actually, there's quite a lot of these units here, aren't there? They're only worth three though, but Rather than spending a bunch of time evacuating these units, I think I'm going to move them into that compound. So when you build it, you can take any uh, civilians that are in the space and just automatically move them in there without spending any actions. Uh, so I'm going to just move them in there, um, and so I'm going to end up paying one supply every turn to um, deal with that. But um, it it gives me some uh, some safety, and I don't have to worry about moving a bunch of ones one value civilians around the board. <clears throat> So now, uh, that's my first action. Now the Pearl Security Services uh, compound unit is on the board. And uh, one of the nice things about this is, unlike most of the um, Pearl Security Services characters or, or units, this has a good range combat rating. So now I've also got the ability to do a little bit of range combat on this track. For my next action, uh, I'm gonna actually do a search with uh, Martha Winfrey here. Um, again, I'm. I'm kind of going to be burning through supplies a little bit here, so I'm going to see if I can draw some supplies. Uh, so, word has it that the Greenport Utility Board was meeting when the storm struck and they could still be in the building. Place the Greenport Utility Board VIP Civilians Unit in the island-wide light and power area, 3H, along with one supplies. So not particularly great, if we're honest. So we'll grab one supplies and we'll put that in the island-wide that space and <clears throat> let's see where are they Greenport Utility Board so we will place them in this space and um, so they are worth uh, two evacuation points if the power isn't on four if it is on so with the power on um, that's a pretty good uh, result there so hopefully we can get them um, to safety um, 
but I didn't get any supplies, unfortunately, for my uh, unit. Now, I don't exhaust this area, so I could do this again if I wanted to. Uh, let's see, I could search again. I, right now, I'm feeling like things are pretty controlled, so I'm gonna search again with Mark for my third action. Call in an airstrike. Check your unit's admin rating. Your unit just points in the general direction of the target. Apply two hits against any one horror's unit. Three, four, okay. Wow, that could this could be really good. So I'm using, so her admin rating is three. Boy, you'd think um, the CEO would have a slightly better admin rating. So I can uh, apply four hits against any one horror's unit, and I have to exhaust the area. So that's unsurprising. So I'm calling in an airstrike here. So this area is exhausted. Now, which horrors unit should I target? I feel like this would probably be a good unit to exhaust to, to target because these two units are likely to combine into a seven horror stack, and I've only got one unit here protecting us at this point. So I think that's a good one to eliminate. So we will eliminate all four of those units with our airstrike uh, cleaning out the zoo. So with that done, we now move on to um, follow actions. So we start with the Plum Island Constabularies follow action. Uh, and let's see what they want to do here. Um, I actually think that I'm gonna, I'm gonna not tempt fate with them right now. Um, and let them just go and let them not they're not going to do a follow action the National Guard uh, a, Similarly is in similarly decent shape. Although I think they're very low on supplies. Well, no, they're not actually as low. Well, no, they are Everybody's a little bit low on supplies So I think what we'll do is we will perform a search action with them here in this area to try and again, get some good results no supplies, but so, Plum Island Strong, if the Great South Bay Bridge has four or more damage, one person on a bicycle makes it over the bridge. Each player receives four. If it is, okay, let's find out, to start with, how many damage are on the Great South Bay Bridge. It has four damage. So, um, yeah, so I'm gonna get this result. Every player receives one supply. So, let's go over here. So, we will flip this to the two. We will flip that to the two side. So not the best possible result there. So we will give him... Oops. One supply. And similarly, we will give them one supply. So each, every, every, everyone got a one supply. And let's see. Okay, so I think that that is... It. We draw a fate card and we do not get an event, so that's good. So now we have the Greenport Township uh, team. And uh, let's see, what do they want? To, maybe I, what I should do is I should go ahead with my plan to build that, that compound. So um, the mayor gives him an extra plus one to his admin, which allows him to build his compound. So again, we come over here and they will spend two supplies. They will um, add a hit cube to this character and then we'll grab their uh, compound unit and put it on the board. So we put their compound unit on the board here. There's no civilians there, so um, nobody can hide, um, but it does give me some opportunity to sort of try to save some folks. and. Um, Again, just gives me a good sort of like line of defense against uh, horrors coming down this track. So that requires me to draw a fate card. And in this case, um, I do have to draw an event. It was the last potential follow action, so that's not bad. Oh dear, death from above. Spawn the birds of prey muta mutation unit in the Inga forest area. If the Sharp's rifle shop civilians unit is on the map or evacuated, Lord Sharp himself snipes a few birds from the sky. This mutation unit spawns with one hit cube already on it. So unfortunately for us, uh, Sharp's rifle shop was eliminated at some point. So the birds of prey are going to come onto the board here. Now I'm just going to tell you, these mutation standees 
can often be a really big problem, so I'm not super happy with that result, but uh, it is what it is. And with that, we uh, finish the uh, Pearl Security Services turn. Fate token comes out, so we get a reanimated spawn. So we have to draw a track number, so we draw, or sorry, a fate number, so we draw fate number five. And so on a reanimated spawn, we add two tiles to everything on track five. So here's this track five. So this is looking pretty good. So, um, so what I'm going to do, this is going to spawn three on there but it spawns them nice and neatly, so I'm gonna do that and move one back. So we only add two there, so that's not too bad. Um, and then we activate track four. So let's go and look at track four. So track four. So the furthest one down track four is here, but this one uh, is already in a space with a NPC unit, so it's not going to move. And then this monstrosity here, uh, has eight uh, tiles in it so it's gonna move one which is actually kind of a good thing because now uh, Commander Stallion can start taking some pot shots at it which is what we've been hoping for so we have a combat here a close combat here so horrors have a hit potential of one and the Wolverines have a uh, have three for close combat so they're gonna come down here and roll three dice all right, there you go. We got a we got a hit and a shield, and I'm not gonna bother re-rolling re because there's only one unit in there. So um, the the shield uh, protects the Wolverine, so they don't take any damage. The one hit removes this from the game. However, we still do place a biohazard cube in the bag, which is always the unfortunate part about close combat. So that is the end of that activation. So now we draw the National Guard, and this is a little problematic. I, I'm, you know, the board looks nice right now, but part of the problem, or but one of the problems that's brewing is that, um, oh, you know what, actually, I'm sorry. I have to go back a, minute, a second. Um, it's a night turn, so uh, horrors have a, a plus one movement on night turn, so this uh, stack would actually have moved two spaces not one space I, I always forget that's one of the rules that i always forget uh anyway so the national guard's out and i'm just i'm using up all my player activations here which is what's concerning me um but let's see we've got two national guard units on the map i'm gonna leave uh corporal agarn where he is but i'm gonna start moving uh private reacher a bit uh, I feel like this track is under control and I want to maybe start thinking about getting him a little bit over here to sort of help uh, with this situation. I'm going to bring on Private Pile and where am I going to bring him on to? I think I'm going to bring him on to here because he can help with that, with, uh, that, with this stack which is the one that I'm most worried about right so that is the uh, crisis adrenaline moves for the National Guard. And now I'm going to do their activations. So let me just take it again. I'm going to take a quick look at that and come back. Okay, first things first, I'm going to search here in Pearl East. Little ships of the Plum Island. If your unit is from the Neighborhood Watch faction, well, I'm not. I'm not from the Plum Island Constabulary. Uh, so I'm from any other faction, so I can immediately evacuate one civilian unit from any beach or docks area for free. So let me go figure out who that's going to be. So we will activate a private pile here for ranged combat. Actually, yeah, we'll flip over that. So we spend our supply and we have a ranged, com ranged combat, excuse me range combat ability of three. So we're rolling three dice, and the good news is they're in a clear space, so um, shielded results count as hits in a clear space. So range combat, treat as one hit unless it's in a building or forest terrain area. So that is gonna give me two hits. 
on this unit. So one tile, two tiles. So we're whittling them down now to a slightly more manageable stack. And so with my last action, I, I'd i love to attack with this unit, but because they're in clear terrain, they'd have a hit potential of three, which is pretty hefty. Um, but he could, I could get him rolling a bunch of dice, but then I can't move him out. So I'm going to um, continue to whittle them down a bit uh, with uh, Private Pile here. So he's going to uh, do a ranged attack again, taking advantage of the fact uh, that they're in a clear space. Oh, we get one partial hit, so. Absolutely nothing happens there. We just confirm private piles. Yeah, he doesn't have any of them. So that, unfortunately, gets me nothing. And so now we are on to follow actions. And we start with the Greenport Township. So I am going to activate uh, with the Greenport Township. And I'm going to activate uh, Ed Cramden here. Uh, and I'm going to do a move action with him, but I'm going to use his vehicular movement. Um, he can move six spaces, and my plan is to get up here and start trying to move these um, civilians out of harm's way. So he moves one space, two spaces, three spaces, four spaces, five spaces, and now he can pick up a unit. Let's take a look at who we've got here. Yeah, so what he's going to do is he's going to um, actually move six spaces. He's going to move back to here, but he's going to take this civilian's unit along with him, uh, that, that three-value civilian's unit along with him. So that is the follow action for, that, for uh, them, and we draw an event card as a result. A bridge to nowhere. Draw a fate number and find a bridge with that number. Place an additional damage marker on that bridge. So we draw a fate card of three. So let's get a damaged one marker from here. We'll go find bridge number three. We're going to place a damage marker on that bridge. That's not really that bad of a result, frankly. Uh, so that is the end of that because I cannot do any more follow actions we draw another fate token so we spawn on track four and we activate track three so on track three uh, this is the only horrors unit on the track and um, there are three tiles in it so it has a move of four because it's a night turn, uh, but it will only move uh, that number of spaces because it will encounter um, uh, both our compound and uh, Ralph Norton there. So we will uh, have this close combat take place against um, our uh, stronghold which has a close combat rating of four. So the horrors have a hit potential of one, and I am rolling four dice for this compound, which gets two hits. Two partial hits is one hit and one hit. So um, we take one hit on the compound itself. So we'll clone that over there. And then we do two hits on this murder of horrors unit. One, two, and we add a biohazard cube to the bag. Down to only seven yellow cubes left. And I have seven yellow cubes in the bag with five green. So uh, might be time to start doing some uh, special actions with our Pearl Security Services again. Impending Doom is next. Terror on Overdrive. Place a horrors plus one move marker in the spawn zone of each tra track. The next time that track activates, each horrors unit adds one to its normal movement allowance. Oh, wow. Okay. So horrors are going to be moving. So I'm going to place those in, up here and uh, come back when I'm done doing that. All right, so all of those are placed now. And we draw... Another fate token, so somebody's gonna move a bunch now. So 
We spawn on track six and we activate track one. Spawn on track six and we activate on track one. So this comes off the board, but everybody has plus one on this track, but this is, turns out quite well for me because this unit is stunned. So we simply remove that stun marker and he doesn't move. And that actually turned out to be a pretty good way to burn that uh, plus one marker. And so with our last turn order token, uh, we have the Greenport Township. So let me take a look at Crisis Adrenaline here. So I'm gonna move Ralph Norton here. And then I'm gonna move Dr. House here. Okay, so as far as actions go with the Greenport Township, I'm gonna start by having the uh, Surplus Armory do a ranged attack on this Murder of Horrors unit. I'm gonna try and get that off the board if I can. So we remove a supply, and it has a ranged combat of two. So we get a shield and a critical hit. The shield doesn't count as anything. The critical hit could be rolled again, but as there's only one Murder of Horrors tile in the space, we don't need to. So that goes off the board and that area is now clean. For our second action, I'm gonna do a crowd control with Ed Crammed in here. There are three civilian units here, so I am going to crowd control them to the first precinct. And I'm probably not gonna leave them here, but for now I'm gonna go ahead and put them in the armory. I plan to move them on, but he has an admin rating of four, so we can move all three of them, and we'll stick them under there for now. I don't want them there during the hunger phase, because I don't want to have to pay supply for them if I can help it. And for our last action, I think we're going to have Dr. House do a search in the first precinct space. And let's see what we can come up with with a search. Downward dog, your, your unit turns a blind corner, and to their astonishment, they observe a group of people in an open field. They are all on yoga mats and assume assuming the lotus position, and they are all floating inches above the ground. The group is totally unaware of your unit's presence and apparently also not privy to the disaster that has befallen the island. However, they quickly snap out of their trances when you approach their sacks of organic quinoa. Place the Rachel's Uber Chakra Yoga VIP civilian unit in this area along with two supplies and exhaust the area. A uh, quick note about Rachel's, Rachel's Uber Chakra Yoga uh, is there it's worth three ep when evacuated and increases the ep value of each civilian unit that is evacuated with them in the same evacuation action by one ep each so i grab this vip civilian unit and exhausted locations marker and two supplies and i'm just going to place the two supplies uh, here on the greenport township mat and then uh, I place these here, and we're going to have um, Rachel, this VIP unit, join the rest of those underneath that compound. Now, you can only have four civilian units in a compound, so that compound is now completely full. So now we are on to follow actions, and the Pearl Security Services has the first potential follow action, but I am gonna pass with them and we, <clears throat> we will move on to the Plum Island Constabulary instead. And what I'm going to do with them for a follow action is I'm going to use um, Commander Stallion here, and I'm going to have him do a ranged combat action. So first things first, first things first, we pay one supply for that. And then he's gonna use his shoot and scoot ability to move one space to here before taking the range combat action. So he will be attacking this Murder of Horrors stack with his three range combat. So a critical hit and a partial hit. So we will reroll the critical hit and get another partial hit. So that is two hits. So we continue to whittle this particular horrors unit down it is now down to four tiles and with that we have finished our activity phase for this round so now we move on to the replenish location step this only happens during night rounds and what I'm gonna do is take 
uh, exhausted location markers off the map. So I will take this, all of these exhausted location markers and remove them. Remove that one. And I believe that is all of the exhausted location markers. Next, we have the mutations regeneration step. We do have a mutation on the board now, the birds of prey, but they haven't taken any damage, so nothing happens there. So it is the biohazard infection step. So we draw one, two, oh, wow, that was fortunate. So the biohazard level does not go up at all, at which point we refill the turn order bag, change the game round. So it is now the morning of October 26th, and it is a day round, and we get three actions per round. Hopefully, with the how to play videos and the example of play videos, you now feel very confident to play this incredibly excellent game, The Plum Island Horror. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the videos, uh, it would be great if you could uh, subscribe or like or comment or share them uh, to boost the signal on these videos. But we'll be back hopefully with some content on either this game or other games. Thank you.